FM News Talk 97.1. To the Mark Cox Show. Follow the show on Facebook. Facebook.com slash the Mark Cox Show. But tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. Barack Obama, circa 2008. Uh, giving his victory speech up in Chicago, where he will return to the scene of that crime tonight. And uh, he's going to give his farewell speech from the same stage. And uh, instead of being a lift-you-up kind of speech, uh, apparently it is littered with digs at the Trump administration. That's what the rumor is at this point uh, from people who've, who've gotten feedback from the White House. Uh, it'll be his one last time because all the networks are going to carry it uh, to stand up in front of the nation and try to defend his legacy and and make digs at trying to protect his legacy by, I don't know if he's planning to influence or just insult uh, Donald Trump. But I'd like to remind you of what a real farewell address sounds like. We've done our part. And as I walk off into the city streets... A final word to the men and women of the Reagan Revolution, the men and women across America who for eight years did the work that brought America back. My friends, we did it. We weren't just marking time. We made a difference. We made the city stronger. We made the city freer. And we left her in good hands. All in all, not bad. Not bad at all. And so... Goodbye, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Still sends a chill down my spine to hear that man speak. Can I just tell you that? Ooh, ooh. It does. That's Send impressive. I got goosebumps. Look at I, that. I, Isn't I that something? <laughs> you know, I bet you if you compare Barack Obama's uh, going away speech and the one that we just heard, in, Ro- in Ronald Reagan's speech there were a lot of we's. We did this, we did this, we did that. I predict in, in Barack Obama's farewell, it's going to be a lot of eyes. Eyes. <laughs> eyes. Yeah. I, I did this. I did that. The well, eyes I, have look, it. I bet you. Compa- yeah. We'll compare that tomorrow. Yeah. And we're going to talk a lot about uh, uh, not building walls, but yeah. building bridges. We'll, did, we'll hear that one tonight. You've been he- hearing rumors about the speech. Anything about reverb or Greek columns? No, I haven't, but I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Just yeah, wondering yeah. If, if that um, was going to that, that, that could happen. And, and I'm sure we'll hear one or two. Let me be clear. <laughs> You know it's coming. Yeah. It'll be the last time we have to hear it, though, so that's reason for celebration. And, uh, go ahead. Oh, and, I said, and as I said, there's, it's probably going to be a big crowd, a lot of people there, and I also predict that a lot of homeless are going to have cigarettes <laughs> and will be well-fed tonight <laughs> in Chicago. Yeah, they'll have the uh, they'll have their hands out looking for donations yeah, as yeah. people leave that one. Cigarettes, no cigarettes and the hamburgers. Can sliders. you imagine the security when the President of the United States goes to the deadliest city in America? I mean, what are they going to do? Like, put a, They're going to have to put the shields up. To keep the bullets from raining down on his head. It's interesting when you know I never thought of it like that. But, uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but honestly, yeah. about about the crime issue, I mean, they they did a story up in Chicago on the fact that Obama's coming back to give his farewell speech there, and they went and found a community activist, a guy named Jamal Green, who was highly critical. Of the Obama years, who didn't think, who, who even went so far as to say Obama should be embarrassed. I would be embarrassed as the president to know that I, I've, I've done really not much for the people that put me there. I said in Grand Park when I was uh, declared the winner of the presidency uh, that this wasn't a task for one year or one term or even one president. The sentiment that man expressed is the sentiment a lot of African Americans have. But there's a thing among our community is you don't air dirty laundry out in public. So he'll, he he will be vilified for saying what a lot oh. of people are saying uh, in their homes and in their churches and among ourselves. But I he can. That. But he continued, and really, he was criticizing from a liberal point of yeah. view that he didn't do enough 
as a, a black president for the black community. Listen. He's neglected to talk about the starving communities. He's neglected to talk about the violence. He's neglected to talk about um, the lack of investment into urban communities. He's neglected to talk about police brutality. Issues that are plaguing the com uh, black communities um, all over the country. And so we do feel uh, neglected and we felt like he could do more um, and he could have possibly saved some lives. I think he's exactly right. I think the president and his team were very worried about him looking like a black president and going overboard, helping uh, over helping black people. But I would have loved him seeing him criticized or people saying, hey, you're you're targeting too many. You're targeting black people on this legislation too much. What about the rest of America? And I think you can make the case that he bent over backwards for homosexuals with gay marriage and 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 in the military, letting them be uh, serve openly um, Hispanics. He put a Hispanic on the Supreme Court, um, the Dream Act. Um, during the he gave the unions the car companies during uh, the dur during oh the, the, the bailout exactly yeah, yeah. the environmentalist with all of the green stuff and the batteries so it's he's given every part of the democratic constituency group something and arguably you can say their biggest supporters African Americans he hasn't really done anything hmm. the only thing that you can really point to that I think that he's done is is lowering census between crack to disparity and he had he put together some type of program uh to mentor young african american men and hispanic men that's really the only two direct initiatives that he has put together in eight years directed towards african yeah. americans safe to say that under the obama administration black lives matter unless you happen to be a thug in Chicago, or a black police officer. Yeah, it was something they could use to foster the agenda. You know, Barack Obama will go to Chicago, and if you talk about all the violence, they'll focus on, well, there's not enough money spent on pre-K or, or after-school programs. That's why there's all of this crime. That's what they'll focus on. Yeah, I think you're right. Let, let's switch to uh, Senator Sessions, these hearings that have gone on this morning. Liz, let's go to uh, audio soundbite number 17, please. There are also many things the department can do to assist the state and local officers to strengthen relationships with their own communities, where policies like community-based policing have absolutely been proven to work. I am committed to this effort and to ensuring that the Department of Justice is a unifying force for improving relations between the police in this country and the communities they serve. Do you share my confidence that if you have somebody in the Attorney General's office who enforces the laws as they're written, as opposed to trying to either ignore the ones they don't like or make them up as they go along, that it's... It, it's going to help communities like Chicago. I agree. And you can see the Democrats, that's their whole strategy. When I was watching it this morning, they were asking him questions on settled law, about abortion, about gay marriage. About waterboarding. Yeah, and the thing is, all he has to do is just give the same stock answer and parrot it. <laughs> I'm going to follow the law. I, you know, I may have my opinion on it, but I'm going to follow the law. And they're all flummoxed because there's nothing else they can they can say. Yeah, to them. you know, I'm guessing that if, I mean, he's got his position on waterboarding, which I personally have no problem with enhanced interrogation techniques. I, if it say saves a single life yeah. on the battlefield or at a at, at a World Trade Center situation, uh, I'm all in support of it. Yeah. Um, but probably the attorney general is not the person to ask that question of they're asking sessions because he's expressed his opinion on it as a senator yeah. but the director of the cia if there is one or the director of homeland security or someone like that or maybe maybe even the um, the person in charge of the department of defense is going to be a better person to ask that question to you know whole, yeah. what sessions is going to be doing is interpreting the law yeah. As it stands, right, yeah. and enforcing it. Well, it's just ironic to me that the Democrats are all on sessions asking, is he going to uh, 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 in, enforce the law as it's written? And then we had for eight years the president of the United States ignoring immigration law <laughs> and ignoring deporting people. But they're all now concerned, will Jeff Sessions follow the law? I think. And I tell you, one other thing that was really strange, I was watching um, – Orrin Hatch, he's an 84, 85-year-old man, and we've got a lot of pressing issues going on in the country, terrorism and all this stuff. But his first questions that he asked uh, Sessions was about obscenity. Was really? He, yeah, was he going to was he going to uh, follow some of these obscenity laws and push forward? And I was like, 
That's your main pressing well, question you know, is obscenity? There's your argument for term limits because I was also watching uh, uh, Senator Leahy who oh. seemed to have a little trouble collecting his thoughts today. I'm thinking some of you people have been around too long. That, yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And Talk about draining the swamp. If they could get term limits, I'm, I'm a Ted Cruz on this one. They could get term limits instituted on Congress. Yeah. Uh, it would stop a lot of this crap. This institutional um bias so to speak that is built into the fact that you've been there for 25 years you know where the bodies are buried you know how to stop a bill if you don't like it you know how to get it through if you do like it and eventually nothing yeah. gets done and some of these people like hypocr- the hypocrisy of like Leahy this morning oh you've got such a wonderful family i'm glad here to see you yeah. at your big moment Dick Durbin yeah. said the same thing yeah and by the way uh senator senator sessions you know you're a scumbag right? <laughs> like yeah, that, yeah. that's how it, that's how it seems the decorum of the united states senate <laughs> sir you are a gentleman and a scoundrel <laughs> That's exactly. what you're expecting exactly. out of them. Exactly. Um, but before we run out of time here, real quick, I saw I, I have to I have to bring this up. I, I saw um, Senator Lindsey Graham. His first comments out of his yeah. mouth was was uh, praising Clemson for beating yeah. Alabama last yeah. night. That's what he took part of his time to talk about. Well, I mean, you, you know, watch the game. You didn't see the game I at didn't all, see did the you? Game. That was awesome. Well, you, I got to catch the last. 20 minutes of it or so. Well, you got to understand, good. he's from South Carolina, which you were, you worked, and I live there. It's not exactly a big state with a lot of sports teams and stuff, so let them take pride. They he, took down a, a Titan. So. He practiced law. I knew Lindsey when he was just a lawyer. He practiced law in the almost in the shadow of the Clemson University campus. So he really, truly has grown up on Clemson football. I have to give him credit for that. So you've known him before he got in politics? I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, in fact, he asked my wife out on a date right after I popped the question to her ah. so i told her she missed being famous by that much no she didn't have anything she didn't if all if the rumor's correct she didn't have anything oh, to worry. She, but didn't, she didn't have anything to worry no, about no 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 i don't know uh anyway i'm not a big fan of most of what Lindsay does but i've known him for a long time all right chris arps thank you my friend thank Glad you. you had fun last night i did have fun sorry i missed you I missed you sorry all right you, you good had to be deal. home by midnight yeah i was you. gonna turn into a pumpkin <laughs>